On this episode of China Uncensored, Beijing's warning to Hong Kong. Hi, welcome to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may know, I've been keeping a close eye on Hong Kong for a while now. Once a British colony, the Pearl of the Orient is now a special administrative region of China governed under a policy of one country, two systems. But for years, Hong Kongers have been worried that the Communist Party of China is trying to renege on that two systems part. But the days of worrying are over. Beijing has made it very clear what Hong Kong has to do to keep its precious freedoms. Let them slowly erode away. Otherwise, Beijing will make them immediately erode away. On June 10th, China's State Council Information Office, aka the Office of Foreign Propaganda, released a really, really long white paper. You see, many in Hong Kong have the wrong idea about the one country, two systems thing, the white paper says. Sure, Hong Kong has been granted a high degree of autonomy, but it's not full autonomy. And that's really the rub, you see. The one country thing comes before the two systems. After all, it's not called two systems, one country. The white paper says that Hong Kong's basic law, which is essentially their constitution, gets to be interpreted by the National People's Congress Standing Committee, and the power of amendment shall be vested in the NPC. In other words, the NPC, which is the Communist Party's rubber stamp legislator, can change Hong Kong's constitution any old time they feel like it. A constitution that's totally ignored based on the whims of those in power? Why, that's just like in mainland China. You see, the party just wants to eliminate the differences separating Hong Kongers and mainlanders, bring them closer together, one big happy patriotic family. And that's why, most importantly, the white paper says, the Hong Kong people who govern Hong Kong should above all be patriotic especially the judges. In fact, they have a basic political requirement to do so. Now, the Hong Kong Bar Association for some reason feels that imposing political tests on judges could undermine Hong Kong's independent judiciary, not to mention the rule of law. But no, it won't, because the law gets to be decided by that rubber stamp Congress. Don't those judges know anything about law? Maybe if they were more patriotic, they would. Of course, the white paper isn't only about foreshadowing a scary authoritarian rule. Most of it's about all the prosperity mainland rule has brought to Hong Kong, because Hong Kong certainly wasn't prosperous before. Or how during the SARS outbreak in 2003, it was so nice that the central government provided a large quantity of free medical supplies to Hong Kong, even though the mainland also needed medical supplies in the fight against SARS. I am so glad the white paper cleared that up for me. I was under the impression that Chinese officials tried to cover up SARS, then underreported the number of cases, which led to the deadly epidemic spreading way quicker than it would have otherwise, making it one of the few times the Chinese regime ever admitted to doing something wrong. So what is Beijing trying to say with this ridiculous and offensive white paper? It's saying that even though China might have been involved in hacking Hong Kong-based Apple Daily, and journalists and editors critical of the regime have been harassed and some mysteriously beaten with metal pipes, and a new People's Liberation Army port is going into central Hong Kong, if the Communist Party feels like it, they can make things much worse. And it's no coincidence they released this just days after 200,000 people in Hong Kong commemorated the 25th anniversary of the June 4th massacre, something impossible to do in China, or the annual march on July 1st that commemorates the handover of Hong Kong to mainland rule, which usually turns into a protest, or the upcoming Occupy Central. That's the pro-democracy movement pushing for the actual implementation of promised universal suffrage for the 2017 election of Hong Kong's chief executive officer. Currently, that position is chosen by a 1,200-member election committee, most of whom either have close ties to the party or represent business interests who want to curry favor with the party. Now, this whole Occupy Central thing has been called illegal by Zhou Nan, the former head of the party's liaison office in Hong Kong. He also said that should the protests turn into riots, the People's Liberation Army can always be sent in. And that's the kind of fear this white paper is trying to play on. That as bad as things are right now, they could get way worse. That could be why there's some resistance in Hong Kong to the Occupy movement. Some chambers of commerce have even taken out ads in local newspapers saying that they should back down. And that's the kind of fear, the kind that makes people self-censor, that is exactly what the party wants. 
Because they don't really want to send PLA troops into Hong Kong to smash dissent. They've been investing so much in propaganda and soft power campaigns precisely because they want to look good internationally. Tanks rolling into the heart of Hong Kong really doesn't fit into that strategy. But if they can scare people with something like this white paper, maybe people won't want to step too far out of line. Maybe they'll just quiet down and hope that the party won't take everything away as they slowly do just that. So Occupy Central's coming up, so is the July 1st march. The question is, will Hong Kongers hit the streets and show party leaders just how patriotic they are? What do you think? Leave your comments below and subscribe and share. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.